Hey, David Julin here, pastor at First Baptist Cramerton, bringing you this morning's sermon. It's uh, about an incident that happens after the birth of Jesus. It's kind of tucked in there in the Gospel of Luke that uh, maybe you're familiar with, maybe not. It involves a man named Simeon, and Simeon is given a gift. He is given the gift that God is going to let him see something special before he dies. What would you, if God could say to you or say to me, what, what would you like to see before you die? What would it be? I confess I'm not sure. I confess that probably I should be more, uh, I, I probably should know. In fact, what it really kind of revealed to me is I'm not sure if I've got all my priorities in the right order. But anyway, we know that Simeon in Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 22, he has been, it has been revealed to him that he is going to see the Messiah before he dies. So let's pick up in Luke 22, chapter 2, Luke 2, verse 22. Now, this is after the, the child Jesus has been born. He's been circumcised. And when the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the, parent, when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. How it was revealed to Simeon by the Holy Spirit that he would see the Messiah, we don't know. But we do know that Mary and Joseph are in Jerusalem approximately 40 or so days after the birth of Jesus. And they are there to make an offering for their newborn son, also to make a sacrificial offering for the cleansing of Mary after she has the child. How Simeon knows that Mary and Joseph and Jesus, that Jesus is Messiah, we don't know either. We don't know that either. You know, a lot of times in the Bible, uh, it just tells us that things happen, not how things happen. I don't know if uh, somehow there was a glow around the Messiah, but we don't know that. But we do know that Simeon, somehow through the guiding and the teaching of the Holy Spirit, was able to go and see the Messiah. And he gives them, though, I think it must have been a welcome but a sobering message. After all, you know, they've gone through a lot. And though they've seen some marvelous things, at this point they've seen the angel, they've seen, <clears throat> they've seen the shepherds come, but every day I wonder if sometimes they're just like, doing all this is just too much. And then along comes a man named Simeon to give them some affirmation. He says that he is he, that he has recognized that, the, that this is the Messiah. And I bet it was a welcome message to them. You know, sometimes we think about the Holy Spirit just doing things for us. <clears throat> but often, often, God can use us to help or counsel or encourage people. Uh, he says and gives Mary and Joseph more of an understanding about how that how uh, and what Jesus' mission is. He's going to be a light for the Gentiles. And then he gives a sobering, but it turns out all too true, prophecy. 
He blessed them and said to Mary, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your heart. You know, that had to be sobering and hard to hear after she'd gone through so much. But it turned out to be true, and it prepared her, we would imagine, for the, those things that were coming up. Then, all of a sudden, somebody else comes on the scene. And there, her name is Anna. And Anna is a prophet. It says in verse 36, there was a prophet, Anna, <clears throat> excuse me, the daughter of the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, I assume it's when Simeon was still standing there, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. You know, sometimes a coincidence is not a coincidence. We might even call it a holy confluence. We have Simeon there, and then we have Anna, and they serve as God's instruments to discern and guide and give Mary and Joseph wisdom, and I think also encouragement. You know, we know that the Holy Spirit's going to be revealed in a mighty way at Pentecost, it's always been there. It hovered over the deep in the book of Genesis uh, before creation. And we know that someday, soon, in the life of Jesus, and about 30 years later, they're going to be a, or after Jesus ascends to heaven, Pentecost is going to happen. But the Holy Spirit, that same Holy Spirit that spoke to Simeon, also speaks to us as believers. Has the Holy Spirit spoke to you? Maybe an audible voice. Sometimes that happens. I don't, I don't um, discount that. But quite often, it's through events, through thoughts, through reading Scripture, through praying. Um, God still speaks today. I think that's something we need to hold on to. He speaks and causes us to speak up, speak out, perhaps, to stand up, to go act. All these things the Holy Spirit is causing us to do, the same Holy Spirit that came upon Simeon and Anna that came forth through Pentecost. You know, sometimes God has called me to speak up, sometimes God has called me to speak out, but I think also it may sound a little crass, sometimes God calls us to shut up. Sometimes God is calling us to be quiet. And there are times in my life that I certainly wish I would have spoken up more, that I would have spoken out, that I would have acted immediately. Sometimes uh, when people, I felt like the, the, uh, the urging to ask somebody if they would like me to pray for them. But I will say this, probably more and more in my life, uh, God probably was telling me to be quiet too, to shut up. If that sounds a little blunt, I think that's how it is. Uh, it might be sometimes like uh, Abraham Lincoln quoting Proverbs 17, 28. Sometimes it's better to be uh, silent and suspected a fool than to speak up and remove all doubt. So there are, there are times when God's Spirit is prompting us to do so many things. Um, but I want to mention something here today. Today, following rituals, they're not so popular today. It's about spontaneity. If it's real, people kind of think it's going to happen spont you know, spontaneously. spontaneously uh, spontaneous is defined as performed or occurring as a result of a sudden inner impulse or inclination without predetermination or external stimulus. And sometimes spontaneity is wonderful. It's authentic and real. Um, but it also seems to me that God's Spirit 
quite often works in a mighty way through those that are disciplining themselves. You know, a, we're supposed to be disciples. That's where we get the word discipline. We see that Simeon, who the Holy Spirit worked, was described as righteous and devout. Anna uh, said had been in the temple almost all her life, day and night, fasting and praying, and the Holy Spirit worked and revealed itself to them. So what I'm saying here is if you want to have insight from God to make it at least more likely that God speaks to and through and with and by you in 2024, let's think about discipline. Let's think about disciplining ourselves. Now, this is not a new idea, of course, and N.T. Wright talks about this idea of discipline in all kinds of other disciplines and other uh, types of endeavors. What about a musician? Sometimes, some time ago, we received some free tickets to watch a concert pianist in Charlotte, and they were so wonderful. They were so wonderful, and they could interact with the crowd, and uh, they played all over the, the keyboard. It was a wonderful, wonderful accomplishment. But, you know, that person had practiced hours and hours and hours to be able to make it seem so natural and spontaneous. We think about athletes that seem to do things so natural, but what happens is quite often, of course, they have practiced hours and hours and hours and years and years to get it to seem natural. Here's what I'm trying to say. Um, quite often, the rituals of worship and discipline and prayer and fellowship, these things prepare us to be more sensitive to God speaking to us, to be more sensitive to seeing where God is working. The Bible says, he who has ears, let them hear, uh, opens our eyes. It seems to me that regular disciplines make us more receptive or more able to hear the urgings or even perhaps the gentle shoves of God who's working and speaking to us. As I said, regular worship, singing, fellowship, prayer, study, fasting, helping others, witnessing, stepping out in faith, all these make us, I believe, more sensitive to God's Holy Spirit and more able to be used by God. Now, this is not works righteousness. You don't earn or manipulate God into doing anything by any of these rituals or disciplines. Uh, that's not the case. You are simply responding appropriately to what God has done. What do we have that we have not received, Paul writes in Corinthians chapter 4. We have received everything. All we are doing is responding. There's an old hymn that used to uh, be sung as I was growing up. It said, it's called, Take Time to Be Holy. It's, Take time to be holy. Speak off with thy Lord. Abide him in him always and feed on his word. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. You know, it takes time. It takes time to grow in any relationship, whether it's a marriage, whether it's any kind of relationship, it takes time. Spiritual virtues, gifts of the Spirit, I think they don't just manifest themselves spontaneously. I don't, I don't think forgiveness is something that we just naturally are able to do. I think it's something, now maybe some are a little bit more than uh, so, uh, able to do that than others, but forgiveness is not natural. It's not easy. No one comes by it naturally. I think you have to uh, spend time with the Lord, spend time in uh, worship, spend time around others. Fruits of the flesh do not come naturally. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those don't come naturally. Again, maybe some have a little bit more than others, but I can tell you what does come naturally, at least in my experience in my life and the life of others, impurity, 
jealousy, envy, fits of rage, discord. I've never had to teach a child how to be jealous or envious. So in 2024, let's discipline ourselves to be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit so that we can be used by like Simeon and Anna. The rituals of and the disciplines of our faith are not there just to make us have some sort of works righteousness. They're there to make us to be more sensitive and malleable, open to listen to God, to hear God, and to be used by God. Let's let 2024 be the year that we are more sensitive to the Spirit. Maybe there's some spontaneity in that. There's nothing wrong with that. But more important, let's be focused on the regular disciplines that we have in faith. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who have been open and sensitive to your spirit. We pray now that we would be more open and sensitive to your spirit like Simeon and Anna in this 2024. Help us to be good disciples and be disciplined and to worship and to pray and to be faithful in all those things that help us to be used and open to your spirit. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, God bless you, and I sure hope to see you soon. Come worship with us here at First Baptist Cramerton.